Taking over this week, another week of Hippie Life Podcast. I don't know what I'm saying right now. Hippie Keys, he's excited. Let's go. Let's no, roll. For real, for real, for real. My uh, homie's in town this weekend, Kato, and we're going to have up? a good show. And as always, I got Jordan in the house with me. What's Young good? Hippie. What's good? What's good, man? Hey, let's go, K. You, you go ahead and take back. Over. Let's go. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, I let you. I let you try. I let you try. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Young Hippie. Gang's with me. Uh, we got, like we said, special guest Kato in the building. What's up, brother? What's How good? are you, man? I'm good. I'm excited, bro. Uh, it's it's been a long time coming. Uh, yeah. You need to wake up a little bit. A little we, bit we need uh, you. We need you. You can sleep during the bar crawl, I promise you. I, <laughs> I will drink some of that, actually. Let's do it. And we got Chris in the building. What's hey, up, Chris? Everybody. How you doing, man? I'm doing great today, you know, enjoying this uh, beautiful Saturday. Woke it is pretty Saturday. Late. I still got to get used to it being Saturday. <laughs> we done, like, what, three Saturdays, and I still feel like it's Sunday, but we'll get back Four to Saturdays. it. Yeah. Four Saturdays, huh? Has football's been on that long already? Oh, it has. Got the bicycle here. Oh, handles, right? It's brand new. Uh, I just guy. noticed that. Look at <laughs> you, boy. He got the pineapple Ooh. shirt on and the bicycle <laughs> handles. He is feeling himself today, ladies and gentlemen. And, yeah, we're going to be feeling a little bit more here later yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feeling all types of ways. Let's get into it. But before we do, uh, we like to break off into the week. So, uh, K-Bug, how was your week, man? Well, the, the week itself was pretty good. Um didn't really do too much just kind of worked and everything but found out that my foot after all is a little bit more fucked up than the doctor noticed mm. the first time and I, I emphasized noticed <laughs> because I went in for her to look at the MRI and apparently on Friday half a week after she looked at the MRI she actually looked at the MRI and wanted to get me in right away to immobilize my foot in a boot and called me and left me a voicemail to tell me that. And I don't check my voicemails very often. <laughs> so a week later, I got the message <laughs> and um, my homies were down <laughs> this weekend and I wasn't about to be hobbling around on a boot. So I was like, what's the big fucking I, deal? You just got to put I, a boot on? I got yeah. the boot right here, buddy. <laughs> no, so, man, not this weekend. I, Kato's in town. You think I'm going to be a boot all weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I so I, I got a I got a fucking appointment for Tuesday morning to go have them tell me I gotta put a boot on and tell me what she actually saw when she looked at the MRI. That's so fucked up. That's weird. What's up. Excuse me. Um, other than that, uh, unfortunately, Robert Hunter, for, uh, the lyricist from the Grateful Dead, passed away this week. So it prompted me to get a new Grateful Dead tattoo. Nice, and nice. Any excuse to get a new tattoo. Rest in peace. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, it it had me listening to a lot of their music even more so than I normally do this week, and like listening to the words even more so. Yeah. And definitely the message. He, huh? I mean, he really he drove the message of that band. The music was really drove it and carried it, but his words are what to me I really attach to the music. So. I feel you, man. Did it take you back? It it really makes you think about it, and and like I even caught myself like listening to some of the words and like kind of putting new meanings to them that I hadn't really thought of in that way because I probably hadn't really concentrated on the lyrics as much recently. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like once you know the words of a song, you kind of listen to other things when you're listening to it. You definitely do, yeah. But yeah, so that was my week. Soul searching. Listen. You know, <laughs> just hanging out. And I'll be so hobbling. Searching. Apparently, I'll be on hobble for. The boot least. does not make you hobble, bro. You just walk with a limp, like a pimp, bro. That's it. Get a cane, you'll be fine. <laughs> K 
Kathy's gonna be like, "What so, the fuck do you have this cane for, Kyle? Don't cane. worry about it, woman." Yeah. <laughs> <Please. laughs> K Boogie Kane. Hey, <laughs> dog. Get a yes. grateful, grateful Dead Kane. You should, bro. <laughs> That's a pretty I bet you, Andy. Party. Even if you take the boot off, keep the cane. I have a feeling Andy Yo, might know something about woodworks. I have a small feeling he might be able to carve you a cane. Andy, like. Yeah, you Nito. I just have a feeling he just, like. He if does he doesn't, work. he knows a guy, right? Right. <laughs> Is, you can just be, hey, Andy, I'm going to need a cane. I got you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Word. So. How about you, man? You had an interesting week. I did. I did have an interesting week. Um, I just started my new job yesterday. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was dope, man. Uh, I work at the Vic in Verado. For those of you that don't know, it's like way out west. It's still part of Buckeye. Um, and it's like... It's in a mountain. It is. It's on the mountaintop. The restaurant's on the mountaintop overlooking like basically... I mean, I can see everything. I can see the Cardinal Stadium. Like, I can see downtown. I can see all the <coughs> mountains. Like, it's it's a dope view. Like, um, I'm really grateful to, to, to get the opportunity. Uh, yesterday, I fucking, uh, I, they threw me on the grill. Um, and I got my first tip, bro, on the first day of the job. Okay. Got my first tip. Like, Congratulations. And Chef was like, yeah. he was like, what do I do with this? We never had this happen before. So I was like, oh, hold up. You know, <laughs> that's what's up. So, and then, um, so I'm like, part of the, the grill is uh, working the fillets and shit. So I'm doing fillet mignons and whatnot and all kinds of shit. And uh, I got like four or five compliments on the steaks. Like, shit was dope. And then at the end of the night, the lady was like, <coughs> She was like, tonight went really well, like really well. We had no food have to come back. Like we had no complaints on the floor. She was like, I'm going to just say you had something to do with that. Yeah, <laughs> so I was charm. like, that's tight, bro. Like, you know, like and I expected. That's a Friday night. That's yeah, a busy it night. was that a busy night. Right? You know, they, and to them, man. to them, it was like a slamming night. To me, I was like, this is cool. Like. This is busy. Just make sure you remember that <laughs> come review time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Remember day one? Remember day one? Yeah. 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 Remember y'all was slammed on day one and I came in brand new and y'all didn't even skip a beat? In yeah. fact, I helped y'all. Yeah, remember? <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, no food came back. We got tipped that night. Hmm. I am the good luck charm. Maybe a few dollars. <laughs> a few extra dollars might help a brother. But yeah, nah. Maybe I should have got a bigger percentage of that tip. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know what? It did go to saute because uh, they had a, the salmon on there, and the salmon was what got most of the compliments. So I was like, you know what? The fact that I got five, I'm cool. I came in with no money left with five. So, right. Hey. And they put me on right because the pay schedule starts restarts on Monday. So they got me on last night just to make sure that I got on to the pay schedule. So they're tight. I fuck with them already. Like, yeah. So um, uh, we just did do also our first scrimmage today, which was pretty insane. Uh, to come like, I haven't played football, bro, in nine like nine plus years, and fucking coming off an Achilles tear to go out and play like full contact football with uh, like fucking adults was a uh, mind blowing to me. But it was dope, bro. Like. Niggas try to fuck me up. I ain't gonna lie. Like, and some dude did kind of like succeed in his mission in a way, but not in a way. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still here, man. I'm, yeah, you feel me? Like, I got right up. Like, you know, like, it dude, yeah, it I did. Injured. I was like, fuck. I was like, I'm not crying. You're crying. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Who's crying? You're crying. Huh? They're, 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 they're got sweat in my eye, bro. Yeah. Shit. I'm good over here. But nah, yeah, man, he he got me pretty good, but I have to blame the quarterback. Quarterback set me up, shouldn't have thrown me that ball, but man, we good quarterback. Wide receiver blaming his quarterback. Yeah, nah, man, I, they, you just have to know, like you know, he and he ain't I'm listening kidding. to this show, like he ain't never gonna listen to this show. Uh, so who cares? I don't care. And I tell him to his his face, like, bro, you can't. Kind of hung me up there, man. Yeah, yeah. I told him I was like, don't throw me that next time. Let me get behind the linebacker, bro. You like threw it to me on the flats, but threw it to me high. <laughs> so yeah. Other than that, it was dope. I mean, shit was good. My my week was real good, bro. I I can't complain about it, you know. So yeah. Kato, how does a week for you look, man? You're fucking. You're all over the place. So what is like a typical week look like for you? I mean, a typical week is pretty boring. So maybe we just talk about like the good weeks. Okay, let's talk about a good week. Uh, I mean, a good week is like wake up at 4 a.m., hop on a flight, go to Minnesota, fucking meetings with radio stations, meeting with 
business associates, fucking trying to figure out how to make money. Yeah. Trying to figure out when I could sit down on my laptop and actually do like the work that makes me money. Yeah. And then uh, just kind of like linking with my crew. My two guys, Buddy Vegas, who's a host and DJ for CLM, and then uh, Kevin Le- Le- Loesch. Le- Le- I f- he says his name right in his voicemail all the time. Every time, I, every time I hear it, I say, fuck, I always say it wrong, but I can never remember how to say it. Uh, they're kind of like, they're like my ground crew, man. Without those guys, I'd be fucking lost because I was telling Kyle this morning, like I woke up to like 14 emails from shit that Kevin was responding to that I just, I don't have time to deal with anymore. So yeah, like get in, like run a show, go to the bank, get money, fucking go to a show, set up, deal with artists, artist egos, artist managers, oh, yeah. <laughs> run a show up till two, no sleep, just fucking dragging ass. Damn. It's, I mean, it's, it's a good time. A part that I, I love and hate at the same time is feel like every time I go to Minnesota, there's just so many people that I have to see Yeah. that I'm just like, fuck. And you know, not, not enough time to no, see all those I, people. Tons of people that are like, will DM me afterwards and be like, I didn't even know you were in fucking town. I'm like, well, I had to try to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, why am I trying to tell everybody I'm here? Like, I got to keep this to the, to the uh, social meetings that are going to be lucrative for me in the future. Yeah. Not that I don't want to kick it, but I'm not trying to come up there and get crazy stupid. But yeah, that's like a usual crazy week, but <coughs> and right now I've been getting looped into doing things outside of concerts. Obviously, I'm here doing the, the pub crawl, trying to get that taken off here in Scottsdale. Got another company in Lexington, Kentucky. I've got my other company in Louisville. Damn. Those concerts and pub crawls. <coughs> Obviously, have CLM, which is 90% Minnesota, but we're <coughs> branching out and doing stuff all over the Midwest. And then... Uh, Kind of like another another wing of the company is we've been working with a lot of nonprofits and shit, which is, to me, probably the the most work I have to do. But it's at the same time kind of like the most rewarding. Yeah. Even though it's not really financially anything that does much for me, but it's more of like a resume builder, like working with uh, companies that do stuff for like youth homelessness. Another company I was saying earlier, like Polo for Philanthropy. The event is dope as hell, but I have no idea what the actual like <laughs> message is. I don't know what the nonprofit is. Is it like I think it might just be for horses, like uh, okay. like basically like think of like horses that are like show horses and, and racing horses and yeah. like, when they get broken and they're done, like instead of putting them down, like they can go to like a little yeah they go shelter. To, they go to like you know uh, this horse they, shelter they to, yeah like this a farm north, and a ranch the glue factory pretty much yeah yeah but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an open range. <laughs> recently got pulled into this thing called uh, BitCon, which is like Blacks in Technology. And it's uh, second annual time in Minnesota. Last year, their first one was uh, the last public speaking appearance that Nipsey Hussle had before he was oh, murder- murdered. So, like, they kind of kind of got some big wigs that come in and I'm just doing marketing and event operations and all kinds of shit that. <laughs> that is fucking tight. I, never, I, I thought I was going to be doing concerts the rest of my life, not. <laughs> Not uh, event management, but and we'll talk about that. It's cool though. We'll talk about that, but that's tight, man. I I really uh, applaud you there. Here, we'll... <laughs> yeah, man, you got some you got dope. Sound effect. Yeah, you got some dope shit coming, dude. And and I I can't wait to just check it out, man. For real, like from the the bar crawl is one thing, you know, but the other shit, sheesh. Yeah, it's a fucking workload. We will get into. It. No, yeah, we will. I've... We will. <laughs> oh yeah, Chris. Yeah, uh, if you can, if you'd like to. Yeah. What is, what what is what does your week consist of? Um. So the week starts off at two, like two forty a.m. I wake up and I drive pretty much an hour away to start work. And I work in an infusion kitchen, so we start at three thirty, ten hour shift, and that's that's Monday through Thursday. And pretty much after I get off work, I just go to the gym, eat, and just go to sleep because I got to be up early as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to yeah. maintain that because if I don't, I mean, I've done that before and it's not pretty the next day, you know. They yeah. say you're dragging, dragging. Fuck, man, an hour drive to work. Y'all hear that dedication? My man drives an hour to get y'all with y'all need. Y'all better appreciate this. Mm, you know what I mean? <laughs> better start appreciating it when you eat it, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just playing. Or am I? <laughs> That's what's up, though, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, glad 
to have you here, bro. Um, even though yeah. we're not gonna be talking much about you, yeah, yeah. It, we're gonna get your I show. I got some pretty soon. big projects that yeah. I, we can, we talk, can about talk about another though. time. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. another time for sure. Well, thank you, man. You definitely did bring the party. I can't Yeah, lie. yeah. That's he what did. I wanted to bring. He did the bring the party, though. Shit. Yeah. We got, we're, that's like the jungle juice right there. <laughs> <laughs> we could compare it to something in the party. He brought the jungle juice. You feel me? We got to get fucked up. That's but full I, bar right there. Fun, huh? Fuck yeah. Full bar. That's what's up, bro. Well, all right, man. Well, K-Book, you got some uh, You got some. Yeah, there was some, some federal marijuana news this week and nothing is like going into law yet but uh secure and fair enforcement banking act which is basically um going to safeguard banks for working with marijuana businesses um that passed the the house so it passed uh 321 to 103 there were 92 Republicans that voted against it. The rest voted for it. And there was only one Democrat that voted against it. So it was like, it was basically everybody was in favor of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it now has to go to the Senate. And apparently, from what I read, the Senate's been pretty fucking res- resistant to even bringing those bills up to even vote on. So there's no telling if it'll go any further than this. But to me, it's a, it's a, it's at least a step in the right direction to getting it more normalized. If they could pass something like this, it would basically mean we could start paying for weed on credit cards. Yeah, I mean they could they could charge it to the car. Yeah, you could. Yeah. You wouldn't have to worry about having cash before you went to the dispensary. They would be safer. They wouldn't have to have as many armed guards at well, the dispensary dude, because be it's not so all helpful. cash. There would be incentives for businesses to like they could get loans They're right now a marijuana in credit card applications I'll tell a, you that right now a marijuana company so. cannot get a business loan to get started they have to have liquid money you know nobody can invest in that because it's too it's much true. of a gray area this is already the if, plug before they got if, it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. Uh, he took that plug money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, cool though. you know, at the end of the day, if if these things get to where I could invest in a marijuana business just so that I can invest in opening a liquor store, fucks the difference. And then there's going to be a lot more movement towards voting all this other shit. Yeah, the right way. That seems. Uh, seems like a lot of people could join in. I mean, can you imagine just uh, applying for that new Apple Goldman Sachs backed credit card on your f- iPhone? You see that? Yeah. I was and then just go go into dispensary it. and be like, all right, I got my new Apple credit card. Ding. Yeah, I was uh, pay for it that way. I was thinking about getting one of those, but I'm real bad with credit. But I really wanted one. Just because every time you use Apple Pay, it gives you money, gives back. You money back. And I use yeah. Apple Pay all the fucking time. <laughs> like, I did because I leave my debit card at home. So that's like the convenience of Apple Pay. You just phone, you take your phone everywhere. And yeah. Uh, all right. We'll break out real quick. We'll come back in. We'll get into Kato. We'll get Diamond Seed. And yeah, we'll be right I paid 400 and wore it once I'm copping every week with no problem at all Boy, you know what's up I upgraded to my main and she make enough Cause I'm sliding out on blades and I'm making cuts I had my L six months but had six whips I thank my big sis She never asked me about a thing when she put them in her name But I still pray to God hard that they never hit her with the mail fraud Nigga, when I move I gotta move crucial When I speak I speak truthful Nigga, you can catch me on the I-10 flaring the roof And when I'm chefing got my pocket it's on tiramisu She only hit me when she need the D She told me, bring the pinnacle and bring the tree I told her, nah, I got some pinnacles I need to reach And that's some shit I don't even drink I turned my phone off and went to sleep I guess no privacy at all A nigga so fly, I can't shit up in a stall Nah, really I can't sit in there at all They'll tell that it's me by Yo, what is good, everybody? We are back in the bakery And before we, uh get started here we're gonna do a little review here on this triangle kush live resin from cresco here in this puffco so give me one minute i'm gonna die and i'll be right back (laughs) (laughs) click this no 
bumper child. Just double tap the front. That button. Oh, but you, this one's like oh. actual. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta press it. Little bumper child. <laughs> oh. <laughs> little bump for chow. Little bump for chow. <laughs> you were dead. <laughs> You've never done cocaine and had your heart stop? <coughs> no. <coughs> <coughs> okay. All right. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Woo. All right. Hold on. <laughs> and survey says. I'd have to it say, works. Uh, it tastes, it's really good. Like, first of all, it's probably <clears throat> just because we're smoking out of these puff coats. I'm, I might have to just throw that out there. And this aura. Um, but this shit tastes so fucking good. Like, it's just clean. It's, you can taste the terpenes in there. Uh, it's not over fucking It doesn't torched. get too hot. That's, you know, that's, yeah. I mean, and, I, and I'm always over torch my thing. I know I do. <laughs> and this week, smoking out of the regular dab rig and torching it, I didn't get even close to the flavor that I got the week before when I was smoking out of the aura. And I was smoking the exact same shit. Yeah. And so to me, I'll just go ahead and say it. And even, you know, just the one hit I just took off the Puffco, and I've smoked one before. But now that I have a basis to compare off of, these, either one of them, you can't go wrong with, I would say. I, I like the I like the no click button yeah, touch no, button on this so aura. Better. It's just a little tap. It's kind of like kind of like the iPhone where no, go it looks like a button, but it ain't a button. <laughs> I hate and the fact that I have to actually press I hate the fact that I actually it. have to depress <laughs> the button. It takes so much effort. <laughs> but no, I, they're both fucking legit. And if you really want to taste your medication, it is worth the investment. Oh, yeah. I agree. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I think I let it heat up enough, but still it was still good. Yeah, it makes your dabs last a lot longer too. I mean Good God almighty. <laughs> this is beautiful. What is that? Velvet? Yes. I think it is. Oh. All right, Kato. It's good. Sorry. Just watching you guys pass the shit around. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm at the fucking zoo right now. <laughs> Dude, for real. You know, you know Peters. <laughs> when Peters was here, <clears throat> he was visiting. And when we left the studio and he was here, and it was when Alex was here. Oh, And my. Alex brought, <laughs> first of all, Alex brought a thousand milligram brownie that we ate, like, right off the what? jump. I think he brought, like, We split it up grams. between, like, three of us and ate a thousand milligram brownie. And he bought like 15 grams of like 15 different strains. Yeah. And we just started rolling and passing shit around the room. Pre rolls. Brian said, dude, I looked up at one time and there were three different things rolled with three different kinds of weed in it. And I was like, I never even imagined I could be in a session like this. <laughs> 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 it was fucking hilarious. That's dude. tight, dude. <laughs> That's so, yeah, we don't fuck around. We don't fuck around. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bring your lungs. I've been telling people, that's exactly what I tell them when I, uh, when I start booking people. I'm like, yo, look, we smoke a lot of weed. So if you can't, like, if you, you're not going to smoke, that's, that's okay. fine. Uh, but we're not really going to tone it down <laughs> at all. For you. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so if that's a problem... It's How bad do you want to come on the show? And they'd be like, "Fuck it, bro, we're smoking." And I'm like, "All right, bring your lungs in all capitals. Bring your lungs, like bring them shits. It's not not. Don't bring one. Don't bring one and a half. Bring all two of them, motherfuckers. And know your limit. For real. Know your limit. Because I'm all don't out of. Try to impress us. I'm all out of undo. <laughs> I am. I I don't have any more. Which I think I will get. I've got some. two at home, actually. I will. I think I will get some more of those, just because I feel like we should probably have them here. Yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a pretty. Good I think idea. it's cool. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Let's talk about Kato. Kato. So my guy, you 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 do a lot. I mean, shit. I couldn't really keep up with everything you were saying because you do so much. So, what is it you would actually say you do in one category, if you could? If you could summarize it up. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> event, promotion, marketing, and operations. 
That's like the best way to sum it up. That way, add I, genius at the end. Add genius. Add genius. I spend time. Consultant. I spend time end. around people that are way smarter than me. So no, I'm not a genius. But yeah, like it just event like basically covers everything. You know, concerts, pub crawls, fucking nonprofits, and then booking, marketing, operations means I basically do A to fucking Z. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what is one like something you've booked recently that people might be able to familiarize themselves with? Any event or? I shit. mean, how long do you want me to talk? <laughs> nah, hey, man. I mean, I mean, fuck! I've done events with the baby, Migos, Afro Man, Aaron Carter. That's crazy <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> uh, face tat. Got the whole face tat. That's crazy. Um, doing stuff with Chris Webby right now, who probably would be like an awesome fucking guest on this show. Get him. Up. I mean, he would be. We'd awesome love to guest. have him, man. Doors I know he door. smokes. It smokes a lot. I know he smokes. Um, I'd love to have him. Do it. Doing stuff of futuristic. I've been working with Gazak since like 2012. Uh, who else we got? Dax, Mercules, Struggle Jennings. Who's like a, you know who Struggle Jennings is? He's like uh, kind of the country rap. He's like signed with Yellow Wolf. Oh okay. Uh, his whole camp. Working with Mod Sun, which Mod Sun would probably be perfect to come out here for this too. Dude, I, Mod was cool. I've met him before at one of your shows. Back when you were still rapping. That was back at uh, that shitty ass place in St. Paul. <laughs> Wasn't it? I thought he was going to say Mono. I don't, you, I don't, you came with me on the Huey tour. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was, it, it was Huey. It was Huey. Kyle didn't hear that. What? I, I, I said I thought he was going to say Mono. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But yeah. Yeah, fuck, oh, man. Oh, shit. T.I., DMX, Nelly. Did Two. D. DMX. DMX. We tell, just tell DMX. seen that fool. Oh my god. In like in like a short version of what DMX did to you. It was the, <laughs> it was like, there are only two acts that I booked that I actually wanted to like take pictures with, and that was Mob Deep and DMX, just because I grew up on their fucking music. Yeah. And meeting DMX was like meeting an idol, and then having that instantly just like fucking go away I was, a shit I was so disappointed cause like, oh, it, like I almost wanted to cry I was just like what happened so first of all they his manager prefaced us by saying that he's like coming out of rehab and he's cleaning all this shit and like he I'm like waiting at the elevator I didn't even know he was on the elevator and he like got off the elevator and the first thing he was like hey yo like literally like holy shit that's exactly what I wanted to hear you say like, he was <laughs> drunk as fuck drunk as shit and then they like went into the hotel room and they stayed in there for like two hours. They were already an hour late. So like they made the whole show like super fucking late. People were getting pissed. Then he comes out on stage and he had like two crackhead moments. Oh shit. Like one of them. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm What's sorry. a crackhead moment? <laughs> <Were you just, laughs> like, oh, wait, I, fucking, I don't know what a crackhead moment. And I've then, never seen one. <laughs> That's what I'm like, wait. Like you get all sketch and then you just like, oh fuck. <laughs> 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 and no. Like literally. <laughs> hey yo, what is that? <laughs> I was like standing behind the bar and I'm like looking at the stage <laughs> and one of his songs got over and all of a sudden he had that moment and he like goes running up the fucking balcony and I'm thinking like, oh shit, he just performed three songs. Is he dip is he dipping? I, I was freaked the fuck out. And then he got to the top of the stairs and then he started playing Rough Riders anthem. So I was like that was a weird way to like transition in the fucking Rough Riders <laughs> anthem, but I'm like, thank God you're not fucking leaving. And then I don't even remember what song it was, but he actually got down and did 20 fucking push-ups on stage, like a fucking crackhead. <laughs> Once again, like a crackhead. And then I got a, I got a picture. Who want to see me do these push-ups? <laughs> People were cheering, man. They were counting them off. 20 for the dog. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> They were. Uh, you know, every time he goes down, what? Damn, <laughs> <dog. laughs> you gotta turn down your yeah, that, bro. My bad, bro. My bad. Let me get high. Bro. I'm a high, high. All right. Uh, all right. Have you seen him sing that uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Yes. That is comedy. <laughs> no, For real, though, and I will say, based on this story i almost didn't go see him when he was in town uh <coughs> earlier this year no. but me and jordan did go see him and he, he was been late. fucked up but and he was late 
he wasn't super late. Was he though. just right. late because we had that shitty ass I DJ? Was, I, I think it was because of the shitty ass DJ. All right. I think it, there there was a shitty, shitty, shitty. <laughs> Everything about that show before DMX went on was trash. <laughs> like, it was painful. The Period. DJ couldn't even transition from one song to another. Hold like, on now. He was trying. People were booing he him. He was trying, really? but he couldn't. Yeah. yeah. And it was... <laughs> But, but I had the nerve to say, Food X, thanks for fucking with me. Like, <laughs> yeah, but they like, probably gave real, him that opportunity just to go up there, man. They were, he was like, nah, he, he here's knew what somebody, happened. Maybe, here's what yeah. happened. Whoever was promoting the show was like, we can put all these motherfucking support acts on and sell all these slots to all these people I that want to perform in front of DMX. And the promoter made a loot. That was And icon, all the people man. that bought tickets had to suffer through that boo boo. And Just then, DMX. but DMX came out, and no lie, it was like it was the DMX that I wanted to see, and that I had like hoped, like best case scenario, I would see, and it, I had a good time. He did preach to us about God too. Oh, he did. He and, did a little bit. And too when much he got there, he actually made but us. But I all, knew he was gonna do that because he did that album. Well, he made us all stand in a in a circle in the green room and hold hands oh. while he fucking prayed like a preacher. It was, Yo, I, it was fucking weird. Legit though, if I was if I was in the green room with DMX weird. and he told me to pray, I would. Oh, I, everybody was like, hell oh, yeah. yeah! But then he started going, and everybody was like, all right, this is like ten minute long. Uh, <laughs> all, right, all right, wrap it up, that B. Detailed, huh? <laughs> wrap this shit up. Oh yeah, my god, he started stage. going into a rapper. Thank you for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the Hennessy. Hello, God. Right. <laughs> Thank you for these beautiful black bitches that are about to shake their ass to my to my song. <laughs> That's DMX for you. That's DMX for you. I can only imagine. Yeah. <coughs> oh my god, dude. I have a story for you uh, later. Off oh, air. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Really back in. Um. So, you said you used to be a rapper. Uh, How did that help you actually develop your business? Oh, uh, fuck. Every way imaginable. It's <laughs> the best way to put it. No, I mean, if I, didn't, if I didn't rap, I wouldn't be doing this now. Like, it was one of those things where, like, I was moving around a lot after college. Yeah. And every time I'd start to feel like I was making headway in the market, I was moving. And then <clears> having <throat> to reapply all that shit in the new city. And it just kept, like... Like, when you move to a new city, like, you're not to be able to go out and sell 25 tickets. Yeah. Especially when you're, like, you're working a day job. That's all you're fucking doing. You're not trying to sell tickets to your fucking coworkers. It's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you just became a singer. I was like, all right, well, I'm either going to, like, fail epically trying to do this or I got to figure something else out. And it just became something where, like, I just started making friends with, with like, the venue owners and shit and the people, like, that were the promoters. Instead of just being looked at like a local act, I just started, like, picking their brains and talking to them and asking if I could come back and do something later and then just repeating that process and constantly trying to deliver on everything that I fucking say. Doing good business means good business means doing what you say. Like literally like my life code and that's how I just tried to do it and just kind of got good at it to a kind of got kind of got good at it to agree <laughs> to a degree and then I just started getting a lot of artists that were kind of on the come up on the same blogs that I was just reaching out about me helping them book tours and it really started it really started with Webby though. Like I tell Webby all the time like He's one of the tightest dudes I've ever met in my life. Like, he's just straight up just a good dude. And, like, I attribute a lot of my early success and still continued success just based upon the fact that his camp brought me in. Like, they hired me to do, like, marketing for the Chemically Imbalanced album. I'm going to go ahead and say, because he's too humble to say it himself, he grinded his motherfucking ass off trying to make himself an artist. <laughs> and, try, and, and that's how he learned to do what he was doing. And Webby's camp saw how hard he was grinding and what he had done, and they were smart to grab him then. And it gave him the opportunity. It was the first opportunity that he had to work with those types of tools to really show people what he could do. Yeah. Yeah. And That's he's being right. humble as fuck because he did a lot by rubbing two motherfucking sticks together. That's very true. A lot, bro. Like, years of that shit. That's crazy. Ten years. I mean, easily. I, I tell I tell artists all the time when they ask me to manage them and shit, and I'm like, are you ready to forfeit your 20s? Like, it's real. Like, you're going to go through... I mean, don't even, like, think about your age, but I'm like, literally, you're going to spend a good portion of your youth trying to fucking do something that's probably not going to happen. And it's not because I don't think you can do it. It's just the 
success rate and probability for motherfuckers is it's so like slim it's so small yeah and it's like you know I, I knew that when I was doing it but even at the time I never really had an end goal of what I'm doing now it's just kind of moving getting married having kids and I was like well I don't really want to be traveling the country touring and then my travel schedule actually increased with what I'm doing now <laughs> but I mean that's Webby is what it was they brought me into market I did that and then they they were like going through all these changes with management and yeah. agents and they were like well why don't you just be our booking agent and I was like that is what really took me to the next level for everything that I did because that now right now I'm pitching this nationally touring artist and that instantly gave, gave me gave me clout instantly like people were responding to emails but then I was like I was treating these people with such professionalism and respect yeah. that when I came back to them later with these smaller artists, they were still fucking with me. That's so I could route the on cue tour. Like I routed an entire national tour myself with him. I routed another national tour and then just kept buying up Webby dates like Midwest for four years straight. Just Midwest, Midwest, Midwest. All at the time with the hopes I was building my fan base, which I was, but it was more more so I was making the relationships with the promoters. Yeah. And like now, like there's like a there's like a click of promoters. Like one guy runs Indianapolis and Chicago, one company runs Michigan, one guy runs Louisville, one guy runs St. Louis, and then like there's like seven of us, but we all know each other. So like when tours come through and stuff, because of what I did with Webby, like I'm in that click with them. That's tight. I fucking worked my way in there to where like they take me seriously, and when shows come around, like we all communicate and talk about like, hey, what are they wanting from you? What? Are, how can we do this? How can we make a you know a group offer? Yeah. You know to spend less money and you know take less risk. That's but, tight. It all stemmed from just that one shot with fucking Webby, and now I can say that I've actually like marketed shows for him in fucking Europe, and also I booked him in Australia. Yeah. Like, just kind of crazy shit. That's crazy, bro. Man, hold up. Man. Congratulations. I was so I lost. It. Yeah, I was memorized. like, geez, man, that's that's congrats, bro. Really, because that's that's really just what fucking grinding looks like like that's literally the picture of grinding like you're you're the definition of it you know what i'm saying like like he money, worked his way straight out rubbing two to sticks together like bro like i can i can somewhat understand that but fuck bro like to do it for 10 years you know what i'm saying to be able to continue to do it and get your name out there you know what i'm saying like that's fucking that's what like that's something that a lot of people don't have is like that stick with it and like that belief it's it's always like they're trying to find that get rich quick mm -hmm. and it's like that gimmick real quick shit you know what i'm saying yeah. just as fast as you get it is going to be as fast as you that's lose the it the hardest thing to do is to maintain one thought for that one for a long period of time how old are you now 35 man prime. let's let's put it this way what what did we kind of start we started living together in like 2007 ish yeah. in Florida. So from that time until now, he did all that. And how much music did you also put out in that amount of time? Like, like albums. Yeah. I was also mixing and recording and all my shit myself. Yeah. So what made you just say fuck it? Like when did when was the turning point from music to event planning? It wasn't immediate. It was over time because it. That has to be something that's like real hard to let go. Oh like my God, that you put dude, your still, life like, into. I it. still like think about rapping all the time, and like I got friends of mine who I've done features for. They're like, dog, just when are you gonna come out of retirement? Oh, you cold, huh? <laughs> Look at it, you cold, <laughs> you, you cold. And I'm like, just send me a beat, and I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Ah, uh, <laughs> you know yeah, what? A lot. I mean, a lot goes into performing, man. Like, you, I mean, you do all the steps to make the music, and then you get the opportunity to go out on the road. So a lot, a lot of preparation goes into like doing a real stage show. And, yeah. And my shit was hype. So like, but when I was buying all the Webby things, like I was putting on thirty other fucking hats, dealing with local support, dealing with the venues, dealing with the anybody else there. Everything with money, making sure everything was on time. The rider was there. The tech shit was there. And then next thing you know, what I got somebody like tapping me on the shoulder, like, "Dog, you gotta be on stage in like two minutes." And I'm like, "Fuck." I got to be <laughs> artist. Yeah, I completely would forget <laughs> about that. And like, I would still do <clears throat> what I felt was a way better than anybody else but like it just became one of those things that every tour it's just something i started to think about more and more and i'm just like all right i'm making zero dollars as an artist but i'm making this much money as a promoter like, yeah why am i wasting my time doing the artist side when i can just take all those tools and all those resources that i built from being an artist yeah and put that 
to work as a promoter. That makes sense, dude. <laughs> so and still drop some features here and there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, look, bro, we're gonna get him on a CPAP beat. Let's get him on it with CPAP. I, That'd I, be I hard. Don't, I don't know if I've played that song for you. I gotta play this track for you at some point in time today. Just play the whole album when, for him. I, I I should. I will. I will. Not not only will I should. But when I play this beat, when you hear just the intro to it, you're gonna know instantly why I fucking love this beat. I'm already getting excited. <laughs> it's you're weird, gonna bro. hear it and you're gonna be like, oh yeah, Kyle's gonna fucking yeah. That's tight, man. You're you're fucking you're dope, dude. You're dope. I've been excited for this moment for a very long time. Uh, People always ask me too, like they ask me two questions the most. Will you manage me? That's the number one question I get asked all the time. And okay. then secondly, people always ask me, knowing that I came from the artist side, like, would you look at that, like, all the mistakes and shit? I'm like, I'm like, I don't believe in God. I just kind of believe that, like, your hard work is going to put you where you need to be. Yeah. And, like, everything that I, all the trials and tribulations and all the bullshit I went through is, like, literally why I am where I'm at. Like, yeah. if I hadn't learned, you know, picked up a few things from Webby's camp, That'd be shit I wouldn't fucking know today. Like, so I don't look at like my artist side as a failure. I get that was more so I was what I was saying. Yeah. I don't, I don't look at that as a failure at all. I look at that as more of like a stepping stone. Like a learning to, lesson. To get to the next fucking step. Stone. Stepping stone. <laughs> what would uh, be the next step? What do you got on your plate now? I mean, I, I mean, besides the millions and other <laughs> shit you got going on. Making millions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, m my, my business sense has, has changed a lot based around the people that I associate myself with. Like, I used to just think, like, oh, I want to book concerts and, oh, I'll spend this money and I'll do this. But, like, you spend time around people who spend and focus more on contracts, more on strategy, more on, you know, uh, maybe making less but risking no money. Like, yeah. those types of opportunities. So, like, working with nonprofits and stuff, where it's something where it's more of a resume builder rather than going out and dropping like, 10 grand on booking an artist. Yeah. Like, and if I can make the same amount of money, like, why would I not do that over the concerts? Like I still, I still have a love for hip hop, and I want to produce great events. But if I don't have to pay Webby twenty grand for five dates, but I can make the same amount of money spending zero fucking dollars, like that's <laughs> that, that, that that's kind of what's next. Is like how do I get to that point? And there are, there are a lot of things that are in play with just you know some of the professional people in the market in Minneapolis that I've been able to meet through all this stuff that like what I do and like what my team does. And like they just kind of make introductions, and we just kind of see how you know how we can work together and, and do shit. That's a dope. So, I mean, I'd like to just be like a full full service like event event company that just I can do everything. Like I could book literally, your, I could book your tours. I could I could run your nonprofit. I could go I could go get a, an AV company to bring in all the production. I could like like the sky's literally. Do I, I used to be like really Catering. one one track minded, but then as so, as soon as it became like, cause even though I haven't had a real job in like four years because of this, I've always steadily collected paycheck because I was kind of employed by somebody else. But like, as soon as that went away and I started to, I had to solely like live off of my Cheer earnings, yourself. like my entire mindset on how to run my business completely fucking changed. Hell yeah. Well, I'm excited, man. I'm really, I, I want to see, I wish I could be at the bar crawl tonight, just because, like I said, the first one was tight. Except whoever has to do the wristbands tonight, I, I feel bad for you. <laughs> yeah. That's the shitty you ever, part. Have you ever done them before? Did I the, did it. The I, mean, I mean, besides that. No. Nah. Oh. Dude, there's a, there's a method to it. Well, I wish. We didn't I didn't know. There, yeah, nobody, <laughs> I was like, nobody even would. scan would, these things. You put the wristbands I'm on, I'm over here bro. getting people's hair and shit, Dude, putting my, it on too tight. My buddy Justin, <laughs> to it, he can. Like that quick, it's fucking ridiculous how fast you can put a wristband. Justin, on. I'm gonna need to see. We're gonna this need method. some lessons. Yeah, <laughs> send me a YouTube video. Uh, how to <laughs> how to how slap, to slap those motherfuckers, motherfuckers. arms. Like, <laughs> you put it on from a certain side of the arm. You peel with a certain finger. It's, he's he's legit. All right, I like to see that. Uh, well, uh, we have another. We have something crazy real quick. We All have right, an, we, we, have get, we, get, we got crazy. another concentrate. I gotta piss. Yeah, go ahead. We're gonna we're, we're gonna, gonna review we're gonna this. Test this out. High grade diamonds. These are some diamonds from high grade. Let me take a look. Look, that's a diamond. I look like a tooth. Someone's tooth in there. That's a diamond. Someone's tooth in there. Yeah, All right. tooth. 
So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna smoke some of this for y'all real quick, let you know how it goes. You know what I'm saying? AK-47. It's AK-47. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Gonna shoot me in the chest. You, you already put some in here? It's already in there, it's loaded up. Loaded. Locked and loaded. Is that, full, is that set to fully automatic? Oh, what uh, was that? Oh. Is that set to fully automatic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh yeah, let's go. Let it get hot. This is the only type of AK-47 I condone taking into a school. <laughs> Before we uh, get into this, I do want to <laughs> go ahead and... What? What happened? What I mean? <laughs> I didn't. Why? Oh, God. It was probably inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate as fuck. I cannot. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? I'm just gonna be that. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Yes. That's all I can say. Wow. That's what's up. If you haven't, wow. Where can you get that? Emerald Phoenix. Emerald Phoenix. <laughs> that's what. That's the one we represent. That's Emerald what you Phoenix. can get. You can get these high Where's grade diamonds. <coughs> 43rd <coughs> and Dunlop. And where can you get this Cresco? You can get that at Encanto. <coughs> Green Cross. Okay. Ooh, that's close to my place. Yeah. They got all those flavors over there, man. For the Cross Cup. Whoa. Whoa. Nothing happened. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Nothing happened, all right? <laughs> all right. So we two, five Yeah, questions. go ahead. You take over. All right, these are usually high questions, but I altered them a little bit because I knew you would not be smoking. But I think you can still philosophize a little bit. Philosophize? <laughs> I'm, a, yeah. I'm a philosophizer. Philosophizer. So, first question. So you're asking me questions? Yeah, I'm asking right. you questions. Um, they're not <coughs> They're not terrible. If well, you were Kyle booking, wrote them. Yeah, they might be terrible. <coughs> All right. So if you're booking your dream festival, what are your three headlining acts? Uh, <laughs> Eminem, Aerosmith, and Jay Z. Wow. I see that show. <laughs> because All right. I, I went to the home and home in Detroit, and that <coughs> shit was <coughs> fucking crazy. One of the craziest concerts I've ever been to, and Aerosmith Live is fucking badass. <laughs> I actually saw Aerosmith live uh, here when the NCAA was here for the let me, Final Four. Let me say Aerosmith like 10 years ago. Maybe not now. Maybe, maybe not right now. I, I get They're that, They're old too. as fuck. I, 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 will, I, I will let you pick any How time Aerosmith, everybody? any time M is M, and any time Jenna, I'm M. M now, man. M right now. I want to see him come out and do all the fast shit. I want to see it live. No. So I know that all these haters out there saying they're speeding up your vocals. I want to see you do it live. Oh, I re I do remember seeing him when we when when I went to go see when him I was supposed to go with at you. the Rose Bowl and you were supposed to come with, but things happened. Life life happened, life happened. as as I believe it was. Um, but when he went fast, he was going fast. Yeah. Yes, and there's I mean he did rap God during that, which is pretty fucking fast. So anyway, yeah. I'm trying. Second to question. Rap second God. question. What would you do with a time machine? <coughs> and we're talking like one day, no butterfly effect bullshit, just like straight up, what would you go do? <laughs> no butterfly effect. Man, there's a lot he could do. Look at his thinking, his mind's really I'm gonna apply this just to like my last three years. Cause I'm gonna keep this to the entertainment side. Cause I, I don't regret shit about my life. Oh fuck. Um. I would do two things, but they were tied together. One, I would go back and unmeet an individual. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. <laughs> and the other one would be I would go back and not book 
an artist that I was pushed to book because of that individual. Because it was a massive fucking loss. Huge amount of money. Well, fuck that person. Yes. That's as great as I can be about that. All right. And if you had superpowers, what superpower would you have? Oh, I'd fucking fly. That is a very, very common answer. I'm telling you, it's just. Right. I I don't feel like I would fly. Being as fuck. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it would be yet. I mean, if I'm gonna say, let's just say, I would have the powers of Superman. Let's Superman. Just put it that way. Okay. So you can do it all. That's legit. Um. <laughs> crypto, no. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you have any ghost stories? No. I don't have any ghost stories, no. No. Do you believe in this? Mm. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I've, I've had people that have in that chair that have dead ass looked at me. Yo, man. Oh, he, he pointed the chair out like that chair is all fucking. <laughs> that is always. You should have sat that right here always today. the chair. I've had an experience, too. That's fucking crazy. Let, let's get it. Uh, let's hear it. <laughs> oh, man. So, it was actually back in high home? school. Uh, I was living with my uncle, and <laughs> my cousin was watching this movie called Remember the Days, and he was just sitting there watching, I was talking to this chick on the phone, and all of a sudden, the blinds moved, and then they just were still, and I, I can get in the chills right now. Like, I just, I got the chills, my eyes got watery, and I was just like, yo, like, did you just, did you? And he's like, dude, just, just ignore it. Like, don't, and I'm like, <laughs> the fuck you mean? all right. <laughs> like, yeah. What, what? Do you mean just so good? Happens all the time. But, it's like, like a, a beat. Yeah. Every, every Thursday. Thursday. I'm like, what? Like, every nigga, Thursday. I'm still <laughs> fucking, <laughs> no, what? You see that beat? <laughs> It's a beat right there. It was weird. It, yeah, no, it was weird. Like, I could feel it in my body, and I was like, this shit is weird. I'm getting, my eyes are tearing up. It was automatic. And then it just stopped, yeah. And we ignored it. Just stopped, just like and sh- that was it, yeah. Hell no, now I got the chills. <laughs> Fuck that. You guys Fuck are yeah. so obsessed with this thing. Every time. Because oh. we like getting scared. <laughs> no, I love the ghost stories. I and I the too. alien stories. I That's too. my shit. Yeah. They're scary as shit. They're scary as shit, though. <laughs> we be having some good ones on here, dude. Rebecca's was scary, bro. I didn't like, like Rebecca. Seriously. She, she's the one that said she had people sitting on the end of her bed when she was a kid, right? And she'd just be like, get the fuck out of here. Get out of my room. They, she'd be like, yeah, I just <laughs> tell him, get the fuck out. Like, what? <laughs> I'm not saying nothing to him. Then fuck that. I'm chilling. I'm like, Would you like to just get over? Uh, you, <laughs> you want me to get off the bed? Because I, I don't want you pushing did you want, me. Did you want to sleep here tonight? Oh. <laughs> I can go down there. I can, I can sleep on the couch. Homie. I can sleep. With, I can go sleep with my parents. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> you can set the timer. You know what? I was gonna take that glass of water, but you can have it. You, know? <laughs> you might get thirsty in here. That's crazy. Fuck. All right, last one. What are your top three albums? Ooh. <laughs> I wanted to make him think. Oh my god. Uh... Oh fuck. I don't like I can't say top, I'll just say here's some of my favorites. Alright. The black album the Jay Z. It's one of my favorite records of all time. It's when Kanye actually wasn't fucking crazy. (laughs) Making actual good beats. Um, I got that on vinyl at home. Fucking, uh, what was the, what was the Lupe album with like the- The Cool. The Cool. Dude, when you, when you made me listen to that album, it changed my life. Yeah, that, that record changed my life. Um, Ultimate Victory by Chameleon Air. Is one of my favorite records. And then... I love you some Chameleon I love Chameleon Air. Chameleon man. I had an... <laughs> just Eminem Show. That's one of my favorite records of all time, too. Eminem Show. Eminem is... He's raw. I fuck with him. I still be bumping his shit. I <laughs> mean, even shit. liking Chameleon Air, too, is like kind of a, a weird story in itself, because I worked in a, a recording yeah, studio... Work? Dupl- <coughs> duplication uh, production center in Vegas when I was in college. 
I moved out there for an internship. And one of the records that came across the line was actually Mixtape Messiah 1, the very first one. And I scooped one off the line, and I listened to, like, the first two songs on the way home, and I threw that motherfucker out the window. Because I thought it was trash. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's, like, he's one of my favorite favorite artists of all time. Damn. He I mean, stepped his game up, apparently. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. That's cool. Well, shout out to Chameleon Air. Shout out to Kato for giving him a second chance. <laughs> 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 Didn't let him go on the first nope. try. That's what's up, man. You're Dude, cool. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. The One of my still to this day favorite memories is always going to be sitting in Florida during the summer of Wheezy mixtapes mm. and listening to every, <laughs> every single <laughs> verse off every single mixtape. We literally, we had a moment, we were talking about the U-Haul yesterday. Yeah. We were like <laughs> pulling into uh, our spot in St. Pete. We were literally getting ready to move in and they had made an announcement. Oh, this is, we're about to play a new, <laughs> newly released Eminem song and both of us fucking hit fingers <laughs> trying to hit the dial to turn the shit up. We both of us, he's driving, I'm over here like... <laughs> I got it, damn. Chill, bro. We we know. One, that's what's up. That, that's just right there. You guys are boys. That's it. Kyle's, Kyle's my nigga. We didn't even, we didn't even, uh, like, we know knew of each other in college, but didn't even know each other. But and, that right there. And it was like long, it was like long lost brothers were finding each other. Yeah. When our, when our buddy Big Fat Brad linked us, because I just got out Shout of Shout out to Brad. Shout out to Brad. Brad. I just gotten out of a relationship. I think I had posted something on Facebook about it, and next thing you know, I got a message from Brad. He's like, hey, man, you know Kyle's down there? I'm like, Kyle, Kyle. And he's like, yeah, Kid Bacardi. And I'm like, Kid Bacardi. Kid. And he's like, the dude that always fell asleep at the bar. Oh, Kyle. Uh-huh. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. They designed Kyle. Kyle, drunk ass. We worked. <laughs> the dude we worked, always fell asleep at the bar. We worked damn. the same exact shift at, at two Kyle. different places. It worked out fucking perfectly. <coughs> Hell yeah. That's crazy. It's good times. <coughs> I'm trying to think if I fell asleep at the bar. Dude, I see. <laughs> I fell in the bar. Like, I got. <coughs> I would get blackout drunk, and then like oh I'd fall asleep. <laughs> but like if somebody woke me up. <coughs> I'd be like right back into yeah. it and mad at him for waking me up, but like right back into drinking. Yeah. And then I'd probably go fucking blow a couple of lines and like wake back up and then like keep drinking for the rest of the night. So no, that was that was that was life when I was twenty one, twenty two, twenty five. I'm like, I'm nah, man, I focusing. quit that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> the, the diabetes kind of made me stop that shit. Made you stop, huh? It almost killed me. I feel you. <laughs> good thing. Not a good thing you got diabetes. Just good thing you're not doing that other shit. No, I've got I've got way cooler vices now. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I think we're on fucking flavor number four or five over here now. <laughs> just, I don't know, but it all works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so far, I mean, we've hot, hit these diamonds. This is the diamonds of Jack Flash, but it's like more saucy. Wow. But this is still Cresco. Oh. All right. Second day of work and I'm gonna go in there fucked all the way up. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> I cook better when I'm hot. Bro. No, I'm, I was toasted yesterday. I was so fucking. I had just smoked a blunt, then I had to use chef's pen to write, and I was how, like, "How come I trust the pothead to cook me food more than I would trust?" Well, food? this was like as I'm signing the anti-drug paperwork. Mm-hmm. And my exactly. hand smells like weed, and nah, I'm using right I'm using the chef's pen that he keeps in his front pocket, and so like I'm sitting there writing, and then I'm like, I start smelling the pen low key. I'm like, let me make sure this shit is. Yeah, I know my dumb ass. I'm no, stupid. I'm you, Sometimes you think too much. Chef here, you know this pen, you just break the pen. It don't work no <laughs> more. It doesn't work. I gotta throw this out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let me toss this for you. You start writing right handed. It's all fucked up. What happened? Kato, my guy. I wish <laughs> that was weird. I know. I wish we had a. I wish we had more time, dude. I mean, you guys got a lot of shit to go get ready to do. Crawl. I'm so sad I can't go for real. The white claw crawl. The white claw crawl. So white claw crawl. White claw crawl. White claw crawl. So you gonna go out there? I don't really have no plans for. What is it, Scottsdale again? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Scottsdale again. Yep. We did eat down there last night at Bevy. It was not bad at all. 
Really? I'll, and they. Did you tell? And I'll tell you what. So <laughs> two things. I, first of all, shout out to my homie Link. He's got a Philly cheesesteak sandwich shop that just opened up down there. It was not open last month when we were there, um, but he just opened up a couple weeks ago. It's like. Uh, it's like two doors. Da- it's like right next to DJ's is where it is. Okay. Close to um, Goodwood too. Yeah, it's close to Goodwood, right next to DJ's. All right. And so I think that's probably where I'm going to get lunch at. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> but on the bevy menu, I'm going to I work. So. I don't know if it's any good or not, but it looked. They said they had waffle wings, which were hot wings dipped in waffle batter. That sounds pretty good. That sounds fire. That sounds fuck. pretty. I did not order that. Here's last the night, thing but. about that, though. Tell me about it, Chef Jordan. I hope those Chef fucking Hip. wings are already pre-cooked before they. Yeah, fucking, I think it would need to be. Yeah, that would be. A, There'd a be a lot of issues good, with that. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, well, because I feel like you would have to cook the. Chicken or they'd be first, burnt as fuck. Or the, or the yeah, the outside would be burnt. As That's, fuck. That was, I would be really interested in trying those. Anyway. <laughs> wow, I miss as, I miss as bar I sta- food. As I start talking about food, <laughs> well, I'm about to, I'm high as fuck and want to eat. <laughs> I'm about to roll up to work and uh, I get a free meal every. I just can't I can't get the seafood. Filet. Yeah, or the fillet. Yeah. Get, like, what if you want that? Do you get like? Can you, you get like? Hell no. Nah. That right. shit's like thirty bucks or uh, some shit. Just saying if you you still to... paying market price, uh, homie? Right. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Oh, I just oh, donated. You, I you just want this, <laughs> you want this grass fed? That's you coming out of pocket uh-huh. on that. <laughs> Look, there's this paper that it asked if you want to donate to this foundation, and I was like, yeah, I'll do a one time donation of twenty five. He looked at it. He was like, yo, yo, yo. He was like, you know, you filled that out, right? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, nobody ever fills that out. Nobody ever donates money. I was like, well, maybe I'll get it back, you know? Goodwill. I just got that five. <laughs> yeah. you know I'm only out 20 right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to good make car- it. I'm putting that good karma Make out it right back. <laughs> Look, your line is succeeding today. Like, maybe you should all donate $25 to the fund. But, yeah. Let's get things to some shout outs. Shout outs? Let's do it. <laughs> this is a CPAP. <laughs> Actually, the, the intro, intro and, and this, this are both beats. And the intro, he's already rapped on. So you could actually hear that on the album later. But he's cold. He, my brother, I hate to hype him up, but I do. He's. He produced his own whole album. Yeah. I think he said he did not write three of the beats on the whole album, but he wrote all the beats but three and produced everything. And he didn't write any of the lyrics. He just no. went in there. He went in with. He went into the studio with the beat. Like ten little, hours of studio time. It's like some Wayne shit right there. <laughs> and that's yeah. And he was what, like, I was just sitting there sipping, and he was like, if I didn't like some, I would take it out and I would go re redo it at all. And I was and like, what, and what he said then really made sense was like, he would go and live his life all week and not have any plan because whatever happened even on the way to the studio could change his mode right so he went in and whatever mode he was in when he got to the studio was the direction the song went in let's go and that beat just quit oh it's <coughs> that anyway shout outs who's up that was weird go ahead go ahead cable all right well shout out to my wife as always <coughs> especially this weekend putting up with me and kato being there <laughs> Uh, he's been there all having, week? Having, nah, he, uh, just, he came in yesterday. He's, That's leaving, his face. he's leaving tomorrow morning, but like, you know, she... Uh, she so bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your, if you could see your face when you said it, like, it's, it was like you were like just a mad date. Not never mind, but like you were just like, I just got here yesterday. Like, yesterday, bro. <laughs> nah, but she, like, it's cool. She just, she gets it and she... Boys, man. Let's just fucking do whatever we need to do. That's she went out and hung out with us for a couple hours last night in Scottsdale, even though she fucking hates going to Scottsdale for real, for real. And so, oh, yeah, shout me. out to her. Um, shout out to all the listeners. Shout out to Chris for coming through with the plug, as always. Man. Uh, shout out to you, Jordan. I'll let you play, for man. doing your shit and starting your job, man. Like, Dang, I'm proud you, of you, bro. Yeah, I'll hit that one time for you. And... Of course, of course, of course, shout out to Kato. I, I mean, I've shouted him out before. Um, I, I give him so much credit for what he does and all the knowledge that I can still suck out of him for free because, I don't know, for some reason, he did a lot pretty well. 
You, uh, you've got, you got a, I got a tab too, I man. Got a I got, I got a tab too, man. Uh oh. <laughs> tabs My time on might tabs. not have been worth that high, <laughs> that much back then, but I got a running tab too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. Nah, man. But for real, I mean. Oh, no. From honestly, he, there's people in my life that I can say like from the first time I met him, it was like, man, it's a wrap. We're gonna be homies forever, and he's for sure, for sure one of them. True that. So. Nah, he he really does talk about you like at least once a week. I mean, every time I see him, he talks about you. But text, he'll talk about you too. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool, bro. Yeah, on God, yeah, yeah for real. He's always. like, because if, if we're fucking slacking somewhere, he's like, let me hit Kato up real quick. And I'm like, <laughs> let me see if he's got any idea. I was like, bet, <laughs> let's do it. And then he'll be like, yeah, man, Kato said do this, let's do that, let's try this. And I was like, all right. Dude, he's got my sister in law on like a whole new track of perspective too with her like career right now. Yeah, too. just like with like ten minutes of talking. Talk to her on speakerphone for like ten minutes, <laughs> and then she was like texting Kathy. Kathy was like, what the fuck? We've been telling her to do this shit forever in 10 minutes. Now she's listening to you. <laughs> like, imagine what I can do with 20. Oh, oh, man. She'd have a fucking... She'd already have the building. No Just saying. Yeah. She's gotta, All right. She's got to learn from Harvey Specter and Bobby Axelrod. And you'll be sad. <laughs> well, I was going to let Kato go so he can All still right. get some beat. In case he was... Oh, we're not doing anything. Oh no, 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 no. I just meant your shout out because I didn't want you to run out of the beat. And it's cool, you know. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll echo the wife shout out, <laughs> Megan and my kids, because she puts up with my ass and my crazy travel schedule and having to deal with the kids solo. Dolo is never fun because yeah. they're pains in the asses, but they're worth it. <laughs> For sure. Um, shout out my CLM team, always doing work when I'm not. Fucking shout out Kyle and all the shit you guys are doing here, man. Thank happy you, to man. see it and I hope it continues to fucking grow me too uh, bro yeah. thank you for real it is I like honestly I don't it, I don't see it not well he was actually I mean role reverse for once I was I got into the Cat Olive Chronicles podcast stuff and he was the first person I asked so it was kind of nice to actually ask him for advice for once dude I actually I and I and then I fucking watched that shit I watched it it was pretty dope so. I'm uh, censoring myself quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, you don't want to piss too many people I want to be off. way harsher, but I don't feel like dealing with that shit. Yeah, I feel they like can't it. handle the truth. People be, sen- <laughs> people be sensitive and That's shit. That's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be too real with some people and they don't like you for it. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Oh, man. Uh, shout out to everybody that I I am closely ac- acquainted with. Uh, shout out to Hippie Life as well. And, um, I mean, that's all I got. So a lot of people come to mind, but I can't be too nah, specific. You're good. <laughs> you know? they'll, so they'll many feel people, it. and I'm like, they'll feel it. That's why close, you know close acquaintances, are. yeah, you know yeah. who you are. Exactly. You know who it is. Yeah. Um, I'll just go ahead and do a quick, quick, quick shout out. Uh, shout out to you know my chick, my kids. Um, but really, shout out to Dime, dude. Like this is her last time here. Uh, she getting Good ready luck, to dip girl. out to Atlanta. You, you gonna kill it? No, for real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is her last time here, man. So like you know, it's it's really been dope. You know, just our friendship ain't from the end. You know, we go back fifth grade, bro. So. Uh, we gonna be pulling up to Atlanta once you get situated and shit. Once we get a little more money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be there. You know what I'm saying? We'll be there. Give us, give us like some time. We'll be there. We'll be Cause there. then, you know, we can go do a show out there, and you can fucking show us your world. You know, it'd be, yeah. it'll be hella dope. More so. friends equal more flights. Hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? Maybe some discounts and shit. Oh, no. <laughs> something, I don't know, yeah. something. But uh, thank you, man. You, you, for real, you're a big, you're a big part of this because you are one of the original members. You know, you, you helped me start this shit, and so thank you for real. You know, we got you all day in this motherfucker. So you let us know we got you. Other than that, I'm fucking solid. Episode 49. This is episode 49. I do have to actually say shout out to Phoenix Relief Center. Make sure you guys check them out every week, every day. They have deals. They're on 35th Avenue in Southern, right inside the Walmart Plaza. This is session 39. Session 39. <coughs> correction. Young hippie. Correction. <coughs> 49. Damn, correction on top of the correction. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, I have that. But I'm too high for it. 
Session 49. K-Bug, Young Hippie, Kato, Chris, and Dime Daddy. We out this bitch. Peace. Bye, y'all. Peace.